Hey there guys, I'd just like to start this video by saying a huge thanks to 365 Astronomy for supplying the scope for this video. If you'd like to check them out and support me at the same time, at absolutely no extra cost to yourself, then go ahead and check the links in the description box just down below. Now I'm willing to bet that a lot of you out there, just like me, can remember a time not too long back, really, where if someone would ask the question, what should I get as my first serious entry into astrophotography there would just be a chorus of answers all basically saying the same thing and that was get yourself an ed80 now it was damn good advice and to a degree still is if you're looking on the used market you can get some great bargains these days on those things i had one myself and absolutely loved it it wasn't all roses though those scopes they did have their drawbacks and you'll excuse the pun the draw tube was one of those drawbacks. Optically speaking, the scopes were rather nice, but mechanically speaking, they left a little bit to be desired. Generally, many folks, myself included, opted to upgrade the focuses on them due to slippage and flexure. Uh, it was, in many cases, really a needed upgrade in order to get the scope to perform as well as people knew that they could. But also, in many cases, depending on the focus that you opted for, the Moonlight being a really popular choice, as well as the Bada steel tracks at the time, you basically almost added the entire cost of the scope again onto your initial purchase. Next up was the fact that, owing to this being a doublet telescope, you really needed to add the optional, not really optional if you're going to do astrophotography, field flattener or the actual matched field flattener reducer the 0.85 times offering which again added to the overall cost once more so all in it really was a fair bit of cost and a little bit of work too to be honest uh, but if you did go ahead and do all of that like I did and again like I say you ended up with quite a nice scope at the end of it that could keep up with just about anything out there at the time uh, and it would give you many 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 nights of really great enjoyment Thankfully though, things have changed now. These days we have access to scopes which just a few years ago, really, would have been so prohibitively expensive to own that they would have just been out of the budget for nearly everybody. Just a select few really could get their hands on things like I'm going to talk about today. It's fair to say now that the scope of things has changed so much that for just really a little bit more than the cost of one of those tricked out ED80 is you can get your hands on something that mechanically, optically, and aesthetically is just light years ahead of one of those old scopes. I think for many people, uh, this could end up being one of the only scopes that you would ever need to buy. Um, I think most people just need a couple. Me too, even though I don't adhere to my own advice. I have way too many telescopes, but I'm quite excited for this one, just generally speaking. I actually requested this particular telescope with making a series of videos in mind about kind of going back to my roots, getting out there in the garden and uh, doing some proper astrophotography once again. So without any further ado or introduction, I give you the ZWO FF80 APO. Now this is a Petzval quadruplet APO with an 80mm as you would expect. Uh, objective diameter, a 600mm focal length and a resultant focal ratio of f7.5. Now they use two pieces of ED glass in these things which makes it qualify as a super apo so I will be looking for perfect control of chromatic aberrations. Now it does claim to offer full frame field coverage which is absolutely tremendous as those are the largest sensors you're ever going to use for astrophotography. Uh, so the more commonly used APS-C size sensors should pose absolutely no problem. I'm going to be looking for perfect stars right to the edges from this thing. Optionally a separate 0.76 times reducer is available which brings the focal length to 456 mil and the focal ratio to f 5.7 so if you wish to speed things up just a little bit then you can opt for one of those as well okay so you can see to get my actual rig ready now for a night of imaging the first thing i had to do was cannibalize everything from the quattro 8 inch which had previously been set up for use on the am5 right there uh, actually had it working quite well but it was time for a change uh, you can see a little bit of a time swap there where the EAF is 
instantly installed on the FF80 Apo, and that's because I needed the cameras to record a short installation video for people in the hopes that it might help someone out there and uh, you're about to see I had my first issue during this setup procedure so I'm struggling with where to mount the ASI Air on this thing there's nowhere obvious that you really could put it with the mounting equipment that I had so roll the next segment well, I'm just in the process of installing the FF80 now onto the AM5 and I have hit a couple of snags which I thought I'd touch upon uh, just while it's fresh in my mind. So, the first of which, it's way longer than anticipated. So, <laughs> this is with the focuser at about half extension. I just installed the EAF and I don't yet know the telescope's focal point, so I guess they're around about halfway. Uh, but even if it was all the way in, it's still quite long. Long enough that it makes me worry that when pointing up towards Zenith, the camera would be at risk of colliding with these legs. So if you are thinking of purchasing one of these to put on an AM5 or similar with the TC40 tripod in particular you are going to need to also think about the peer extension which I don't have luckily I do have a plan B for that in that a while back I purchased myself one of these I don't know if you can see here it's a tri -peer. it's all folded up right there but that's going to get around the problem entirely for me uh, the other issue that I encountered just while rough fitting everything onto this right now so you can see I've got the Evo guide as my guider 2600 on there a filter drawer etc where do you put your ASI Air <laughs> so uh, it would be nice to see a specified mounting point for this or maybe even a second um, dovetail available that kind of thing uh, not dovetail you know find a shoe adapter which this doesn't have uh, so instead I opted to take off the handle which you can see among that lovely bunch of wires on my couch right there and install as you can hopefully make out right there the male component of um, the ASI air holder just onto one of the dovetail rings directly using one of the included bolts and I just stowed the other bolt for the handle right in the middle of that so uh, yeah, a little bit more work to do, but we'll get in there. Well guys, we're all done finally. It's on the pier mount, it is ready to go. The cable management is pretty pristine, I would say. Nothing's in a position where it can possibly snag. Bring you around to this side as well. Everything's got usable length runs. And there we are into the head on the AM5N. Very happy with the result of that. I think it's going to do a great job. All we need now is some clips, guys. Alright guys, so as you've probably just seen from the very brief time-lapse footage right there, uh, that I had a small window within which to test this telescope and I did my best within the time that was available to me. So uh, what I wanted to do mainly was just get it out and check for its function, if you like. Uh, I can't go into any very deep tests at this precise moment in time, owing to the fact that we don't have enough glass guys, but what I could do was check uh, in the very earliest form possible uh, the color correction of the telescope on some nice bright stars the field coverage how the stars look in the corners the illumination of an APS-C sized sensor and also the field flatness uh, and also at the same time check for any weirdness in terms of you know halos ringing distortions etc so I'll talk you through exactly what I did now I also made a mistake and I'm going to point this straight out to you so uh, the star that I chose for this particular field flatness uh, test was Almac and I didn't realize that Almac has a little secret if I just zoom right in right here and turn this STF off it's a double star at least a double star um, so <laughs> you can see a, a you know like a hotter blue component right there and then the yellowish component right next to it now unfortunately what that means is that when I tested this exact same field of view as you can see here with a Binov mask on the end we ended up with a slight ghosting so two 
diffraction pa uh, patterns going on at the same time almost right next to one another so what i really want to try and point out is the fact that if you see any ghosting that's because i've done this test on almac that's my fault uh just try and focus on the brighter of the two patterns that is uh, available and that should be the, the brighter component of almac now as you can see in the center i put the scope into focus it was a little bit cloudy at that point but then i took that focus star and moved it with the mask in place into all four corners and the reason for that is because this would it's a very sensitive test this would give us an indication of the field flatness or lack of field curvature on this telescope uh, and so that's exactly what i did you can see i moved it into the top left top right bottom left bottom right and if we zoom in now to all of these so let's take them up to a one to one view um there we go it should only just take a moment right so they're all zoomed in right now and as you can see if i open up that middle pattern once again to a one-to-one -one view also there is really no detectable defocus whatsoever i'm willing to say that this thing has a flat field <laughs> that's putting it lightly it's certainly as good as any telescope that i've ever tested in terms of field flatness looks extremely promising to me so uh, i think that's a sensitive test it's a good way to check these things out and it's past that test with flying colors no doubt about it so uh, really happy there that put me in a good mood the clouds didn't put me in a good mood but i'll show you all the same what i managed to capture i got uh, as i showed you the focused shot right here so if you take a little look around this this is just a single sub uh, sometimes if you're checking out stacks things like that they can actually hide flaws almost uh but just take a look top left there viewed it two to one zoom bottom left bottom right you know you can see where this is going top right it's really well illuminated this is no flats at all of course this is just one single sub uh no weirdness no strangeness going on in the star appearance it's just a very clean dispersion going on it looks beautiful I, i'm really impressed and as you can probably see stars in the center well they're just as good effectively as stars at the edges so it's a really well corrected telescope uh at least as far as i can test currently up to aps-c but looking at this i have nothing that makes me believe that it wouldn't you know pass with flying colors to on full frame at least that's what i think um a little bit of a failed last experiment you can see a glow in the bottom left of this this is just one single one minute sub of andromeda and did this right before the clouds rolled in again and then i started to get worried about rain uh so i had to pack away but here it is we had a little bit of guiding error in this one owing to those clouds uh only a very tiny amount but i thought i'd mention it anyway you can see a very tiny little bit of eccentricity in this image owing to that uh but it's present across the whole field we know what it is uh it's guiding error nothing to do with the optics but here you are once again you know stars in the top corners no fringing no strangeness just really attractive star profiles i think top right same thing you can actually make out color on these stars even in this uh, unsaturated unprocessed you know just literally stf stretched image i've done nothing to this nothing at all um yeah tight little doubles there easily splittable they're certainly you know not merging into one <laughs> that's pointing it lightly but i think this uh, scope basically shows an awful lot of promise i wish i had the opportunity to test it further at this point but i simply don't but that's as far as i've got and that's what i'm going to share with you today uh, now if there's any particular objects or tests you want to perform on this leave a comment down below i will do my best to uh to take care of any and all concerns you might have i just want to jump in really quickly and say if you are thinking of purchasing one of these telescopes for yourself then please do consider to use one of the affiliate links in the description box just down below it really helps me out a great deal so a huge thanks to anybody who's already used those and it does also send the right signals to companies like 365 astronomy for example in this video they should keep sending me gear for review so i can show these great things to you guys uh, and another great way you could support me as well if you want to treat yourself at the same time is uh, to one of these binov masks that i manufacture and ship all over the world from right here in my humble 
home in England. Uh, I used this actually for this video, so check those out as well in the link below. Thank you. I understand it that this telescope is functionally exactly the same really as an Ascar 80PHQ. So if you are looking at purchasing one of these scopes, um, look around at images from the PHQ as well, because you know, whatever that can do, this should be able to do exactly the same. They are just different colors. As far as I know, uh, if anybody has any information, you know, to the contrary of that, I'd love to hear it. Um, but yeah, and also if you can find one cheaper than the other, that also might be a purchasing decision if you don't mind which color you eventually get. But you know, as, it, as I've got the red one, if you like from Zadrio, that's the one I'm going to be taking a look at uh, over the course of the coming months. So uh, yeah, I'm excited for this. I am actually genuinely excited. I like the look of the telescope. It's a little bit longer than I thought, but we've got that all sorted out now. So uh, it's, you know, perfectly grab and go portable, at least in terms of my uh, my garden setup, which is all that really matters to me. So thank you very much indeed for watching. I've gone on way too long. I'm going to stop right there and just say thanks so much for watching, guys. Thank you for your support. And I look forward to seeing you in a future video. So until then, look after yourselves and clear skies.